today is going to be a very exciting day because of these bad boys. After we took this car to the track a single time, it roasted the stock brakes. So bad where the front right doesn't have any pad left and I'm driving on just caliper to rotor. It's very bad. So I really needed new brakes, but it isn't just new pads or new rotors. No, it is a six piston Willwood big brake kit and a four piston rear Willwood big brake kit from Flying the Yacht. This is how big the front caliper is. It's bigger than my face. Oh, I cannot tell you how excited I am for this. I wanna give a huge thanks to Flying Miata for helping me out and giving me a discount on these brakes. Flying Miata is really awesome. They make like the best Miata stuff. I've got their turbo kit, I've got their coolant reroute, I've got their clutch, and now I've got their brakes. And I'm hoping to have more stuff in the future. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and unbox all this stuff, get it all organized and laid out, and we can talk about what we got. Here is everything that we got with this big brake kit. We've got the front calipers, six piston, the rear calipers, four piston, a proportioning valve, some nice stainless steel braided lines, um, the adapter thing, uh, some bolts, Front rotors, front rotor mounting hat, front pads, rear pads, brake fluid. I'm guessing these are the rear rotors. And then new parking brake cables, which I'm not sure if I will end up using, but um, yeah. I mean, this is everything we got. As far as I know, this is literally the most powerful brake kit that you can get for these cars. So, now you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, why? Why do you need this good of brakes? You've got 220 wheel horsepower. It's, it's not that much. Your car weighs 2,000 pounds. And you're right. But soon we're going to be making a lot more than 200 wheel horsepower because we got a new engine for this car. But that will be next video. So stay tuned for that. It should be pretty easy. It's just a simple brake job. Disc brakes should only be installed by someone experienced and competent in the installation and maintenance of disc. Hopefully I don't screw up this brake kit that cost almost more than my car, so. Let's get started. I think we're gonna go ahead and get started with the front. Best thing about this car is that nothing is rusty. Tell this thing really wants to come off. This is what happens when you take your stock brakes to the racetrack, guys. Seriously, like after two two corners, you could smell them, and this is why. Holy shit, they got destroyed. That's hilarious. So these are two part um, rotors. As you can tell, this is not what goes on your car. This mounts to this, and this goes on your car. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yes. Now, obviously, that uh, caliper is not doing anything right now because it is not hooked up to any brake fluid. So, what we have to do is disconnect the line from up there, and then we're going to run a stainless steel line from there right into the back of this uh, caliper. And then we're all good for this side, and I mean, proceed. It just. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. So good. That was easy. Just 
And as you can see, the stainless steel line is in. There it is connecting to the stock hard line. That's it guys, this side is done. Big brake kit installed, boys. I'm gonna go ahead and test with the wheel real quick just to make sure that everything fits. Oh God, the wheel needs to be cleaned so badly, but yeah, that fits. No rubbing. That's the clearance we have between the caliper and the wheel. Uh, like I said, this is the biggest brake kit you can get for 15 inch wheels and 16s on Miatas are disgusting, all right? So let's go ahead and do the other front one and then we can go on to the back. So this side is all done. Here's a better look at the brake line. It's really cool. Not only are these new calipers so much bigger, more powerful, but also just so much simpler and they're so much easier to deal with. Literally to change pads, all you have to do is take out these two pins, the brake line and just from there to there, no difficult anything. It's just, it's so much simpler and just so much easier. And just look at how freaking huge. <laughs> There's now time to move on to the rear. Just look at how freaking ugly these things are. And how tiny. Like, my finger is almost bigger than this caliber. It's ridiculous. I'm telling you guys, this shit is not fair. Red Loctite both looks really delicious and it smells delicious. It smells like a cherry like syrup and I literally am so thirsty. I just wanna just slurp, oh God, it's not fair. I just wanna eat it. Boom. All right, so this side is all done. The caliper's on, the rotor's on, the line is in. Now looking back there, you might be thinking to yourself, where the heck is the e-brake cable? My answer for that is that it's nowhere because I'm not using an e-brake with these brakes. With this brake kit, it is an option to get an e-brake cable and make it so you can actually use an e-brake. And it looks like they actually included it in my kit, even though I asked them not to, but that's okay. The problem is that you can't use the stock e-brake cable and I just really don't feel like replacing the entire e-brake cable and trying to make it work. I've also heard that it's not nearly as efficient as the stock e-brake, so, uh, in my opinion, it just wasn't worth the extra effort. Wherever I park it, I'll just park it in gear. It won't roll away. I don't park it in public places very often, so I don't have to worry about it too much. I live in Illinois, which is literally the flattest state in the country. No, it's like the second flattest. Just kidding. But yeah, I just didn't feel like it was worth all the extra effort. So what I did is I just uh, zip tied the stock e-brake cable up into the rear subframe so it's out of the way of everything. It doesn't mess anything up and it looks clean. So let's go ahead and do the last side and then we can get to bleeding the brakes.
guys. All right, and the last side is complete. Now I thought we'd be done and ready to bleed the brakes, but we aren't quite there yet. We got one more thing to install. This is a proportioning valve. It adjusts uh, front to rear brake bias so we can make sure that we fully get the full potential of these new brakes. This little guy replaces this thing right there. We're probably gonna get brake fluid freaking everywhere and shit, but oh well, let's do it. Damn it. No. No. This is the only thing that's supposed to be easy. Like, come on, brake lines always come off, right? No, not this fucking one. Just this one. I even went to get a flare wrench and just, this thing is so fucking stuck. I mean, stuck. <laughs> that's not English. Literally the last thing on this entire project goes bad. Why? Now I have to replace an entire brake line. Gotta say, Molly, I'm a little disappointed in you. You were supposed to be my car that never had issues during installs, but no, you just, you can't keep that record, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I tried vice grips and everything. I could not get this one rounded off, um, flare nut off, so that sucks. I tightened everything back up, put all the lines back together. I think the only thing I can do to actually get that off is cut it off and try to reflaring the end of this brake line. I might have to replace the entire brake line. I might not, I don't know. But uh, I don't want to go through that hassle right now. So we're gonna try to run these brakes without the proportioning valve. I don't know, maybe it'll be good, maybe it'll be bad. Pretty much the proportioning valve allows you to adjust front and rear brake bi bias. And without it, we might have too much power going to the front brakes or too much power going to the back brakes. So then when you, when you hit the brakes hard, your front wheels or your back wheels might lock up too quickly. And thus, obviously, you can't fully use the potential of your brakes. But we'll see, maybe we're lucky and the bias is really perfect where we don't really need to adjust it, we don't need to change it. Um, maybe it isn't, in which case we'll have to do some cutting and brake line stuff and This is some race car shit, boys. We're gonna have to do like a full flush in order to get this old, ugly, gross brake fluid out of there. So uh, I'm gonna go pick up Audrey and then we are going to bleed the fuck out of these brakes. I also have to get a different wrench because this is a quarter inch wrench. It's not an eight mil, it's not a seven mil, it's not a six mil, it's a quarter inch. Are you ready to pump some brakes, Audrey? Yes, I am. Yes, all right. This is the color of the old fluid. That looks appetizing. And that's the nice color of the new fluid, which needs a little bit more of. So we're pretty much done now. I'm gonna do a couple more things. I'm gonna clean the wheel wells, clean the calipers, get everything nice and clean, get all the, uh, the, the brake fluid off everything, get nice and clean, get some cool shots, and then go take it for a test drive. Solar eclipse. When is this happening, Audrey? Uh, August 21st. What time? Um, I think- What hemisphere? In Illinois, we will see it at well it starts technically at like 11 30 in the morning but it will be, be like a nicest. full yeah. thing it will look nicest at like one audrey and i the science girl no don't put it in the video Caleb. i'm putting that in the video <laughs> We took the car out for a test drive. Everything seems good. There's a little bit of a shake in the pedal 
Um, but as I drove it more and more, it got less and less. So I think that's just something with the braking process. Um, it's a 50 mile braking process, so I'm gonna drive the car back home and then back to the shop tomorrow morning. They'll be 50 miles, they'll be broken in, and tomorrow we will bed them in, which is like doing the hard stops 20 times and stuff, fun, fun stuff. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Just believe. Just breathe. I put about 50 miles on the brakes to brake them in, and sadly, we still have a little bit of throbbing in the brake pedal. It's only above 45 miles per hour, and it's not too terrible, but uh, it's definitely there, and I don't think it's getting better. Um, it also shakes the steering wheel, so that means it's coming from the front, and I believe it's coming from the front left. So, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take it all apart. I probably did something wrong. Um, Retorque everything, uh, clean between the hub and the rotor. That might be a problem. And it might be a rotor that's bent or cracked. I highly doubt it, because they're brand new and it's a really good brand. So I doubt that, but oops. I'm gonna go ahead, take that apart, try to fix the problem. We were supposed to bed in the brakes and test them and do some awesome stopping and sort of tests and stuff, but I'm not gonna do that with throbbing brake pedal. So I'm gonna fix that, and then in the next video, we will test the brakes, bet them in, um, do some like 100 to zero, 60 to zero, zero to 60, 60 to zero, kind of fun stuff. And then the video after that, we'll talk about the new engine. So sorry about that, but I, I, I wanna fix this and I don't really feel like filming it, so that's the solution. But let's go ahead and get some cinematics of the new brakes, now that the car is clean and looking decent, and then goodbye. So play the footage now.